we have is a side-by-side -side comparison of with and without Havoc. So on the right is the basic troll, and on the left is the, the version enabled by Havoc plus the self by technology. So Ross, if you can bring up the, the mesh, you can see how much is actually simulated. So we simulate the cloth, and we simulate the tissue of the, you know, even some of the subtle, subtle things like the jowls and the, the soft tissue around the legs. So I'll focus in a little bit more on the simulated character and bring up some of the performance statistics associated with him. So there we see um, we're running on the latest uh, Core i7, and uh, in these uh, six threads here, uh, we've got the green and blue represent different parts of the, of the simulation. So let's add in a few more of, of these guys and see how it scales. So we can pretty much keep on going, create a little army of these guys. Uh, let's bring up the uh, let's bring up the, the stats again and see. So um, you can see how we scale extremely well across the six cores uh, on this architecture, and this goes across uh, the breadth of our products. Okay, so let's have a look at a uh, slightly more demanding uh, example of cloth simulation. So typically in games you'll find that uh, a lot of the clothing is relatively tight-fitting, and that's because it's quite difficult to animate free-flowing cloth. And as you see, we have an animated version here. But let's have a look at a side-by-side -side comparison of this versus a Havoc-enabled dress. So you can clearly see the Havoc-enabled version, and you can spot the difference between them. The Havoc-enabled version is much more realistic and lifelike. And you, there's just no way that you can create that kind of effect by, uh, by animating the cloth. Um, so not only do we save developers time, because they don't have to do the animation, we also create a uh, much more immersive and realistic character through our cloth technology. Again, let's focus in on the, uh, on the Havoc, um, Havoc simulated version. So I think what we should do here is add in a few more of these, uh, of these dancers just to see how we scale. So we've got about 7,000 vertices in this, in this dress. Um, so let's make her dance. Um, and aside from the, uh, the runtime capabilities, a lot of the value that we provide is through the tools uh, that we give to developers to integrate into their game development pipelines to make this possible and to you know, control exactly what they want out of the simulation technology. Because really, in games, it's 20% realistic simulation and 8% whatever you can get away with uh, favoring. <laughs> but, we, honest, yeah. but we focus on the 20%. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's maybe move to our last demo, um, which is a demo of uh, destruction. So we have a classic... Uh, this is the destruction product. This is the destruction product, exactly. Uh, so it also shows how a physics simulation on a large scale. So we fired this bridge um, with our Space Marine rocket launcher, classic Wild West style. Um, you can see this is the without, without. This is what you'll find in games today. Yeah. You'll get some, you know, pretty nice particle effects, and then at some point in time, an animated sequence will be will be played back, which is laborious to create and happens the same every time. So if we enable the, the, the Havoc version here, we can uh, we can see what it looks like if you can physically enable this bridge. So this is with destruction. This is with destruction turned on. Uh, so you can see it's different every time. Much better. It's much better. I think you can if you look closely, you can spot the difference. Um, so, uh, we didn't get to see Russ when we bought the whole bridge. Unfortunately, that's not. all right. 